She is, amen. Amen, for November, and I already gave it up. Amen, you spotlight for November, amen. <laughs>
um, this homosexuality as an abomination. He says in Proverbs 15 and 9, The way of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord, but he loveth him that follow after righteousness. I hear a lot of people say that it never talks about sexuality in the Bible, and it's your choice to love what you want. But it says in Levit Leviticus 18 and 22, You should not lie with the male and with the woman, it is an abomination. The Bible even gives an example of how he reacts to this unnatural sin with Sodom and Gomorrah. In Genesis chapter 19, two, um, it talks about two angels that were disguised as human men. They were living in Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot met the angels in the city square, and he urged them to stay in the house. The angels agreed, and then the Bible um, says, Before they had gone to Baal, all of the men from every part of Sodom, both young and old, were surrounded, surrounded the house. They called to Lot, Where are the men who come to you tonight? Bring them so that we can have sex with them. So basically, the angels went to block all the men in Sodom and Gomorrah and urged Lot and his family to flee from the city to escape the wrath of God about to, um, he was about to deliver. Lot and his family fled, and then it says in Genesis that the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. Then he overthrew those cities and the entire plain, including all those living in the cities. It also says in Jude chapter 1 verse 7, just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, which likewise indulge in sexual immorality and pursue a natural desire, serve as an example by undergoing a punishment of eternal fire. The reason why God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah was because of sexual immortality, but also because of all the sin and demonic spirits and wickedness that was happening in that city. We can think of this as the anger he would have toward, of us, toward us if we committed sins, especially if we knew they were sins. We as Christians know what sin is and the truth about Jesus Christ. We should be disciples, spreading the gospel about everything we know. Letting your friends know what they may be doing that isn't pleasing to God is something that a lot of us don't do because we're afraid of what they're going to say. If we aren't able to, tell our, to witness to our friends and family, then who will we be able to witness to? The right, this right here is something that I personally believe we need to work on. I'm always worried about what my friends or my family members think if I tell them the truth, but God, that's not what God would want us to do. We have to um, make sure our lives are in order before Jesus returns because he is soon to return. The Bible talks about the signs of Jesus' return, and as we see, many of these signs are being fulfilled today. In Matthew chapter 24, Jesus' disciples were asking him the signs of his return. The Bible was written over 2,000 years ago, and as we can see in 2015, a lot of these signs are being fulfilled. It says in the message version of Matthew chapter 24, verse um, 3, Later, as he was sitting on Mount Olives, his disciples approached him and asked, Tell us when are these things going to happen? What will be the sign of your coming the time that the time is up? Jesus said, Watch out for doomsday deceivers. Many leaders are going to show up with forged identities claiming, I am Christ, the Messiah. They will deceive a lot of people. When reports come in of wars and rumors of wars, keep your head and don't panic. This is routine history. This is no sign of the end. Nation will fight nation and ruler against ruler over and over. Famine and earthquakes will occur, occur in various places. This is nothing compared to what is coming. No, they are I'm going to throw you to, to the wolves and kill you, everyone hating you because you carry my name. Mm. And then going from bad to worse, it is, the, it is going to be dog eat dog, everyone each other's throat, mm. everyone hating each other. In the confusion, lying, preaching, lying preachers will come forward and deceive a lot of people. For many others, the overwhelming spread of evil will do them do, will do them in nothing less of their love but amount of ashes. Staying, staying with it, that's what God requires. Stay with it until the end. You won't, you won't be sorry and you'll be saved. All during this time, the good news, the message of the kingdom will be preached all over the world. A witness sticked out in every country and then the end will come. So with that being said, in order to inherit the kingdom of God, we need to make sure that our lives are in order because many things are happening signaling Jesus', signaling Jesus return. Toward the end of Matthew 24 and verse 42, it talks about us being ready for his return. It says in verse 42, Therefore, be on alert, for you do not know which day the Lord is coming. But be sure of this, that if the head of the house had known of what time of the night there was a thief coming, he would have been on alert and would have not allowed him into the house. For this reason, you must be ready. The Son of Man is coming at any hour that you will not think that he will. In conclusion, we need to study God's words, stay prayed up, so that we will overcome temptations and adhere to what he has to say to us. Because we don't know the time or the hour of his return. In the end, we will be victorious because we will, be, we will live eternally with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.